If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, for the first 22 minutes, me, Adam, and Justin have some fun conversation. We talk about uh, one of our favorite uh, fans. Uh, she sent us a care box, and in that care box was gold. Oh, man. <laughs> Chicken in a biscuit. Ruining stuff. Uh, while we're well, Actually, in fact, while you're listening to this episode, if you hear Adam. rustling <laughs> and crunching and chewing... Uh, There's a rat in here. And uh, uh, rude mouth noises. Yeah. That's Adam lots eating, of, lots of eating all of the and crackers. And that's chewing. Jackie's fault for sending those yeah, in. Yeah, <laughs> those addicting things. We talk about the mind pump chef... Uh, otherwise known as, uh, I'm going to call him Evan from now Evan. on. <laughs> Evan! Name. We talked about our current workouts. I actually talked about trigger sessions and the value of trigger sessions and why a lot of people who have MAPS Anabolic might not be doing them um, and why they should. Definitely want to listen to that part. And then we mentioned, uh, oh, the Organifi green juice. In fact, we mentioned it as a uh, like a recipe to combine with chicken and a biscuit. Uh <laughs> The, not sure that if that's a good weird. idea. Yeah, yeah not sure if it's a good weird. idea. But anyway, we do love Organifi products. They are one of our sponsors. You do get a massive discount if you use our code. Here's what you do. Go to OrganifiShop.com, enter the code MINDPUMP, no space, and you'll get a discount on all their products. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, this particular individual is not happy with any of the jobs that she's had, and she constantly changes jobs. She's 24 years old, needs some advice. We give it to her. Uh, it's awesome. You're going to want to hear it. Adam goes mm. off a little bit, uh, as usual. Well, uh, the next question was- uh, Some wizard wisdom in there, bro. We have it. to happen. We have an athlete asking us how they can get more explosive and more speed for rugby. So we kind of break it down and lay it out um, in terms of how you want to maybe phase your workout. Yeah. In fact, we talk a lot about MAPS performance and how we designed MAPS performance uh, in particular for goals like this. MAPS performance has four phases. It's broken down into maximal strength, reactive strength, uh, explosive strength, and durability. All the things that you're going to want if you want that kind of you know, ancient athlete type of performance, what we like to call broad spectrum performance. Uh, it's our program that probably has more exercises in it that you've never seen than all the yeah. others. Um, you can find that program at Mind Pump Media. Pretty different than what you're doing now, I guarantee it. Mindpumpmedia.com. Then we get into the question, uh, someone wants to know how we pick the books that we like to read. Um, if you've been listening to Mind Pump for a little while, you know that Adam has been reading quite a bit this year. Find out where he gets his recommendations for these books. And finally, what are the effects on muscle growth when you use marijuana Post workout, is that a good idea? Get will, them weed games will it help you build muscle, hmm. or is it just fun? Find out in this episode. You know what goes amazing with my green Organifi juice? Don't do it. Chicken in a biscuit. Don't do it, <laughs> <laughs> dude. No, it doesn't. So Jackie, we, Jackie is in trouble. Jackie, the saboteur. <laughs> so Jackie, who works with uh, works with Mind Pump, is also one of our our. Probably our OG. She's probably the OG or one of the OG fans, right? Because yeah. there's a few of those. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have to give. I think Rochelle. She, have Rochelle you seen is- any of our seminars? You know, you're on our team. So Jackie listens to our show, and then she also does our show notes and stuff for us. So when you look at the show notes and the, if you like the way they're set up, you can thank Jackie. She heard our episode where we talked about. I don't remember what it was. We talked about like foods that we childhood foods. I yeah, think. and I talked about chicken in a biscuit crackers, which mm-hmm. I haven't had. Since I was probably twenty years, probably yeah. since I was twelve, I think even. seventh grade for me. Yeah, what's that? Thirteen? Yeah, yeah I'm, 12, rem- I'm remembering right now why I liked them. So I much. haven't had them since I was twelve or thirteen. So she sends us a, that. She sends us organic gummy bears, a bunch of things that we talked about in the episode. So I open this ba- box up because I'm like, I don't remember what they taste like. <laughs> I kind of do, but You're I don't. Like, you guys have to do this with me. I opened it like, and yes, everybody ate one cracker. Now remember, just so we understand the, the context here, we're a fitness podcast. We're all yeah. we're all like health conscious individuals. We don't eat this stuff normally. All of us tasted one cracker, and it, the, almost the, ha- the whole box is gone right now because- It's amazing. It's um, addictive. It's so- uh, They have engineered this thing to taste so amazing. Yeah. It's the like only reason why I think- Soup in your mouth. The only reason why I think chicken in a biscuit isn't the most popular food on earth is because how do you market chicken in a biscuit? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> the name is- you know, If you never tried it, you wouldn't think so. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do they ever do commercials? For what? chicken in a biscuit? I've never seen one in my life. 
I kind I'm of sure feel, one lives on YouTube. I was going to say, I feel like I feel like I've seen a chicken and a biscuit commercial as a kid. Wow. I'm trying to remember what, and what happens. Like a, a like a chicken flies by and like shits magic dust on it or something. Or? <laughs> I, I don't know. How does that work? I mean, there, there's two grams of protein for every seven. Well, can eight. I can I see the box real quick? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying. To I'm my... about to trip you guys out right now. So first off, they spell biscuit wrong. But anyway, oh. uh, so they spell, they maybe spell it's like biscuit. Like yeah, it's like, know, like it's uh, like Adam wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> B-I-S-K-I-T. Ah, <laughs> biscuit. So I'm, I'm reading the back, and I was looking at the ingredients, because I haven't seen a box of these in forever, and kind of halfway down, or almost towards the end of the uh, ingredients list, dehydrated cooked chicken. Wow, they actually use chicken? These crackers have chicken in them. Mm. That's the two grams of protein. That's the two grams wow. of protein right there. Yeah, just, just Lots of vitamins. Oh, look at, look at, just liquefied. Oh, oh, oh. I was got a commercial. I knew liquefied. they had a Yes. Oh, uh, so this is like a homemade. I don't think it's a real commercial. That can't be. Yeah, that is pretty no. great, dude. No joke. I used to sit. I'd sit down and watch TV, and I'd have a box of mm-hmm. chicken and a biscuit. Yeah, and I'd eat the entire thing to my face. By Dude, myself. You know it's crazy? There's seven servings in this whole container, 160 calories per serving, about r- roughly 20 grams of carbohydrates. What's the serving size? 12 crackers. Oh, wow. You know nobody's going to eat 12 crackers. I know. Oh, that's shit. what I mean. I'm already over that now. Yeah. yeah. So stu- I like on the back- These calories add up. I like how on the back there's a picture of the chicken and the biscuit crackers- and easy cheese, because if, you, if you're going to eat yes. something- like, listen. Yeah. That was like, for me, nostalgia, easy cheese, like immediately, I'm like, oh my God, easy cheese and Triscuits. Like I've, I lived off those in college. It was like Did you for horrible. reals eat easy cheese? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What is easy cheese? I have no idea. Cheese in a can, It's dude. just like but straight it's not, up processed like- What does it taste like? Does it taste like cheese? Yeah, man. I mean, it's, it's like you get addicted to it just like- Crackers. And you would just spray it on your crackers? It's so gross. Yeah. And you'd be like, this is protein. Like, uh, you know, did you? <laughs> it just makes like this noise did, as it comes out. Did you Did you eat it directly out of the can? Um, sometimes, you did. Sometimes when I felt like, you know, I had no shame, like oh, I would do that. Man. I wish I didn't When it was that. dark and I took my shirt off. I had two of those crackers and that's it. And I'm, and I'm, did you really? That's it. I only had two. Oh, you had a ketosis. I am, yeah, I'm, you're I'm, you're fucked. I'm fiending. You may as well eat it. the whole thing. Yeah. Don't worry. I'm going to eat you're, them all. You so got the shakes all of a sudden. No, no. I'm waiting for you to finish them because I'm going to eat them, dude. <laughs> they're they're There's fantastic. There's none left. It's it's crazy how stuff like this is engineered to be just so amazing. I mean, even down to like the the texture. Yeah, the texture of it. How they have this like salty, dusty yeah. chicken remains. I think <laughs> <laughs> chicken matter. Right? Like, I don't even know what liquefied it is. Liquefied chicken matter. The irony of this is we're going to be selling some chicken. I know that's right the now, problem. People are going to go to the store like, oh, and yeah. buy boxes of this. Don't go eat these. No. Listen. They'll Here, do it. Here's the challenge. Here's the challenge. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna let's pick, do our. We're gonna pick a winner. Let's do our Organifi commercial right now. Let's drive people to go get Organifi <laughs> instead of chicken and the biscuit. We need to mention Organifi, don't we? Yeah, we do. Help so yourself. Let's, let's talk about the. Let's importance. talk about a recipe you can use well, with or, Organifi products and, and biscuit and chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're if, you're to fuck, if you're gonna fuck effects. your diet up for yeah. the day and you're gonna eat chicken and the biscuit for one of your meals, like, you like, absolutely here's the strategy. Need to have Organifi. So here's what you do because need that in your life. One of my favorite things, and by the way, just a preface. I'm going to completely make this up. One, one of the one of the things that uh, was great with chicken and the biscuit is you could you'd have them with soup, right? Because mm. it's got that savory flavor. So some sure. kind of a vegetableish soup. Oh, okay. So what you could do is you could mix up some green juice from Organifi, warm it up in the microwave. Now you have warm green juice that you could have with your chicken and a biscuit. Oh my god, that sounds what? gross. <laughs> what are you talking that about? That sounds so yeah, gross. That's not going on the recipe list. Damn it. Yeah. yeah, I don't think I don't think Drew Canole is gonna like that <laughs> one. I like that one. He's like, uh, guys, I don't think that was a very good commercial for us. Yeah. We have people microwaving our fucking green juice all yeah. over the country no, now. But you can blend it and make some awesome shakes, mm-hmm. which I've done that. What did that you blend it with? Uh, with uh, ice. ice, yeah. Oh, just ice. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, uh, what was it? Ice. Super deep recipe there. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say like cheddar. Yeah. Mm. No, it's some berries. <laughs> yeah, I'll bl- threw some in there. You blended cheddar. it with some mozzarella. <laughs> I had I had Chef Ed would do that getting down for us last night. What did he do? The ribeye. Did you see the? Mushrooms, onion, garlic, sautéed in ghee butter, and then put that over the top of. Why does he cook like this for you guys? What do you do for him? Man, he's that's I know, right? The mind pump chef, bro. Yeah, but you're the only one that gets the benefit. That is where I lack all creativity. I don't know cooking. I'm I'm responsible for training him. Does Evan have? Does he listen to the show? Hmm? 
Does Evan listen to the show? Everett. Everett, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so you just shorten I it. I just you made know? up a name. You shorten it up. I like him so much, I gave him a nickname. <laughs> That's does, it. Does Everett, We're not going to call you by your name, Everett. We're going to call you Evan. Evan. You're more Evan. That's You're what I want to do. You're more like an Evan. I want to give people nicknames that are yeah. not really nicknames. Uh, it's just another name. You know what I mean? uh, hey, John. It's really, it's really <laughs> close to their name. My, no, that's my name. That's you. what my son thought nicknames were when I was when he was a kid. Like uh, just another name. You just call yeah. him. Something oh, that's else. my nickname, Dad. I'm like, no, that's not a, a normal. <laughs> yeah, name. It's You're Richard. Robert now. Yeah. So does Everett uh, listen to the show? He does sporadically though. So Everett, which I think most people, I think you should make food for chicken and biscuit. Me and Justin yeah, too, because I think so. Adam I think is we need to bring you in the studio, take, taking you for granted. I already yeah. told him I was the, the boss. only reason. I already told him I was the boss. The uh, reason why we haven't aired your videos of cooking and stuff yet is because Adam, yeah, Adam is holding it up. He's like, no, no, no. Bring me some food. I'll get that yeah. shit on tomorrow. Taylor and him shot. Um, I second that. They they shot a couple weeks ago. And cooking video. Mm hmm. And Everett was like, oh, yeah, bro, I got this. And I talked to him afterwards that they got home because uh, they must have spent like four hours shooting stuff. I said, hey, dude, how did, how did it go? Oh, man, I need to practice. <laughs> uh -oh. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, it's just weird talking to the camera for that long. And I'm like, yeah, no, it's, I'm still not used to it. Bro. Yeah, was, man. I'm like, you know what? Why don't we have... Either myself or Sal. Come I was just going to say, have us do it with him. Well, I, I, and I talked to you, you should remind me. Actually, you know who would be, we, we should have Justin on there with him. Cakes? Me? Yes, you. Why? You're, because first of all, you're brilliant on camera. You're hilarious as hell. Um, and I think you'd be able to say funny shit yeah. with with Everett. Yeah. I mean, you know what I, I'm saying? Yeah, we'd, I, I could see that. That'd be kind of. It fun. depends on the direction that. It depends, yeah. Go. Wherever, if it's, if you're trying to actually make like, I don't think we're trying to do comedy on that. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, I don't think it's supposed to be. Is that, wah, wah. I, I think people that want <laughs> yeah, good yeah, recipe yeah. are like, hey, look at my balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what are you? <laughs> Come on, man! You think, uh, oh, look at my balls? What, I'm on, like, what a cooking channel? What is every, you thinking? One every three jokes of yours is a dick joke, yeah. bro. Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> sure it is. One out of three <laughs> is a dick joke. I'm gonna call you on it. Watch. I'm gonna on the cooking channel. Yeah, like I would. I would. Joke like that. Hey, look, I'm gonna, channel. I'm gonna stir this. That's why it wouldn't work. Shake. You'd be yeah. lost for zingers. You'd be like, oh, that was a perfect dick joke right there. I can't say anything. Adam gave me shit about the dick jokes. <laughs> Everett's gonna have, he's gonna be Everett's assistant. Everett will be like, can you grab the cucumber and just be like, ah, oh, damn it. I wanna oh, say something. Oh, so yeah. It's right here. Yeah, it's, right yeah. right it's right there in front of me. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't wait though till we do some of that stuff with him, huh? Yeah, yeah we're already working towards that direction. So we're, it's coming. It's coming around the mountain. <laughs> when she sing it, I don't know how it goes. Yeah, when I, she comes, enlightened. coming around the mountain when she comes. Yeah. It's Isn't coming that... around the mountain when she comes. No. No, it's no. coming around the mountain when she comes. No, no it's not like that. No. <laughs> That's pretty good. Sing it, sing it to me. Tell me how it goes. Yeah. Tell I me mean, how it goes, you fucker. You can't sing in front of me and not sing it. Listen, bro. Dude, I, I like that. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. <laughs> How's it go? Wow. It's almost like he's rocking as he's doing that. It's great. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. You guys had a lot no of idea. effort there. Oh, that's really good. You guys had no idea. Uh oh. So, anyway, oh. Did, you guys, did you guys do any working out yet today? <laughs> You're the only person that works out. I know. Out. I only asked that, so you guys asked me. Yeah. How's <laughs> you know your workouts going? Why don't you just tell us that? I don't want to come I out. Dude, I work out in the afternoon. We covered this. How was your workout yesterday? It was good. What'd you do? It was good. All kettlebell workout. Oh, really? Yeah, because it was like uh, I was doing just mobility, and then I, it turned into kind of like a light kettlebell skills kind of exercise day. It was fun. What do, what do you do for the skills? Like windmills, juggling. Yeah, juggling. No, no, for real. No, like Turkish get-ups. Oh, okay. And like, yeah. So I get through a lot of the movement practice and um, you know, like arm bars and stuff like that. So I just go through a lot of the movements and get my joints mm. involved and, and tension and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, I did, I did uh, some turkey get-ups yesterday. Turkey get-ups. Mm -hmm. Turkish or turkey? Turkey. It's like a half a Turkish get up. Is it really? Oh, that's a new one. <laughs> you just look like a turkey yeah, trying to yeah. get up. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 some of those. I'll tell you what, man. I've been doing trigger sessions consistently. It always blows me away, dude. And I probably have said this several times on the podcast. I feel like you're always trying to sell me your program, dude. It's not even. Uh, it's not even that. It's not even that. <laughs> it's it? Literally, I feel like you're always trying to push your program. <laughs> <on> it. <laughs> it's li seriously. You I mean, you know what I've been doing. Focus sessions like crazy. Have you been doing them? Lots of focus Super sessions. Super hyper focused. What do you think of them? Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Are they awesome? Changing my physique. Uh, so when every I do day. when I do trigger sessions, highly focused. Consistently, I see change very quickly with them. Very very quickly. The you know why I, I bring this up all the time is because you I'll, created I'll it. fall out of favor. <laughs> No, they'll fall out of favor with me where I'll start doing like one a day or two a day instead of the three a day. Mm -hmm. Makes a big difference. 
That's it all. does. That's all. I, I, I did that this morning. I just <clears throat> did them now. It's I. It's really tough for me to to discipline myself to revisit it two or three times a day. I'm not gonna lie. That's the hard part. It is. It is really the, is the doing them so frequently. Yeah. Even though it's only five minutes. I know. That, it's funny that something that easy, that short, that quick. Uh, I just I I feel like I mentally prepare myself for like okay, this is gonna be my workout time. I'm gonna do it, and then I do it, and then when it's done, it's done. You know. And so I don't I don't have this desire to go back. So I do have in our spare our spare room which is right next to our master a pull up bar with our bands hanging from it and so i try and get in a habit of you know once before i go to bed i'm trigger 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 yeah yeah do some stuff like get pumped up before i go in bed with katrina you know before i come in she's like damn you look so good pumping up the wrong muscles buddy. those uh, triggers <laughs> it's those trigger sessions yeah. sal's got me on <laughs> no but uh occluded body so so here's the understated part about trigger sessions that I always notice is the fat loss effect. I notice my body gets lean very quickly doing them. And if let's say you do seven minutes each time, that's about 21 minutes of activity. 20 minute, 21 minutes of cardio doesn't even equate to what this does. And I think it just has to do with the, you know, like, like making your body want to build muscle instead. You know what I'm saying? It's um, pretty cool. We used to use some bro science like that where, you know, when you're, when you're getting ready to go hit stage time, you're trying to shuttle carbohydrates into so you get a pump while you eat them mm-hmm. so it's like you're you you eat and then right after you eat you're you're getting pumped but there's I, some I, there's some logic there no i i agree a lot of times you know we give bros such a hard time but if it wasn't for the bros out there doing stupid shit we wouldn't be able to we probably wouldn't have studied things to support it or to say nay right so somebody has to go out there and be the the, the test because I feel like if you're if you're working your muscles to a particular with a particular intensity, it's going to want to replenish glycogen. You've got glycogen, or excuse me, carbs coming in your system. You're probably you're right. You probably are going to shuttle more to muscles, or at least it sounds logical. Well, and and the you're problem all, is, how would you study that? Oh, that's that's the bro science part, right? They they talk about it. Like, is it common? Do a lot of people do it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, I mean, that's what you do. Well, as far as I know, most of the guys that I was around them, especially when you're loading for a day, like a show day where it really matters, that's you're doing that after every, right after I, I, I think the, the one of the last shows I did, I think I ate like nine meals the, the day leading up to the show. And it's just a bunch of like carb mm-hmm. protein meals. Mm-hmm. Now, let me ask you this, because you, you normally take like four days off of training before your competition, mm-hmm. but you're still doing these types of things. So right. it's more like trigger sessions. Right. So, and the, the, oh, the, the, the idea behind that's that. That's where the benefit's coming, motherfuckers. The, mm-hmm. idea, the idea behind that too is, you know, some guys, there's a lot of guys actually that still train. There's two camps in this, right? There's the one camp is, you know, oh, I, I I want to keep my body on its normal routine, keep me training all the way up till like literally the day of showtime. So they they their idea is that's what they're they they want their body to be used to that. They want to maximize uh, the pump that they get from the day before and the day of working out. The other camp is in the camp that I'm in is you know you, when you deplete like that. And then you're starting to refuel and refeed the body and fill it back out. Constantly doing workouts and exercising like like an hour routine and stuff like that kind of is being counterproductive of what you're trying to do. Sure. So and you know all workouts are different and you know hard to make them exactly the same every time. So my theory is like I, the reason why I, I cut training out the last four days is because I've already done all the work. Like I'm not going to build you know, extra muscle in the last couple of days, I'm more like trying to be very precise about how much I intake to fill me all the way out, but not to overdo it. And I think if you're exercising during those days, you make that that much harder to try and figure so, out. So instead of doing hard workouts, what if like the trigger sessions? Right. You do, after you eat, it's like a little, just a tiny little, pump. A little pump. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not, and, and really for, for me, it was always the area pumping into areas that I wanted to look. So if I felt like now, let me ask you this. So here's a great question: Do you notice as this progresses, you're getting better and better pumps? Oh, that's a good question. Because that's what happens with trigger sessions. Well, yeah, but then you, the hard thing to, to tease you're also it, carb loading, right? Yeah. So that'd be hard to tease yeah. it out. Like, if, yeah. Well, so that's what I notice when I do trigger sessions consistently. Is as I if I do them consistently, and what I mean by consistently is. Three times a day on my non-foundational days, okay, Mon- uh, morning, afternoon, evening, I notice by the evening session, my pump is getting, it's, it's much better than it was in the, mi- in the middle of the day one and in the morning one. I mean, it makes total sense to me. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I feel like, 
it's you're waking that up, right? First thing in the morning, you you do the first one, and let's say it's like so. Let's say you're doing a shoulder and a bicep pump, like you're recruiting more neurons into that area, right? You're sending more blood flow into that area. So, I mean, that alone already, and then if you progressively do that throughout the day, you're, more and more is happening. So it seems logical that you know that you get a better pump. You know, when I when I first uh, put together the first maps, I for sh- I thought the trigger session part was the most um important in the sense that not important for the programming but important in the sense that it was different and i thought it was gonna be a game changer and i still think that and i still think it's um what's the word uh, underrated and and i think the main reason why it's underrated is what, what we're talking about now is i think a lot of people just don't do them consistently yeah. when they buy the program <clears throat> because they get good results from doing the phasing right, right. from the good programming i agree from all that and but they're missing on that one piece that i think because trigger sessions, technically, if you program them, you can program with any workout. You don't have to follow maps. Yeah, I, I've coached uh, bodybuilders and competitors who do body part splits on how to use trigger sessions with their split. Well, and e- they get blown away by even them too. before even before your trigger session concept. Uh, you know, this is how I applied focus sessions, which were a little more intense, right? But it's the, my my way of thinking is a similar process, right? It's the same idea. You're just you got to think too. You're getting more more volume because you're even if it's lighter it's still more volume sure. you know what I'm saying you get more activity there mm-hmm. so you got to think that you're sending the signal so your body is uh, at, at the bare minimum going to at least keep muscle maybe yeah. it may not it, it may not be a loud enough signal to promote huge growth well, I think we all saw that benefit to it and immediately like I was like oh that relates a lot to skills training and practice and mobility and like it's all you the know, same. it's all yeah it's all related. It definitely builds the volume and it does it in a way where it's beneficial for adaptations. So. I, th- I think we're the biggest game changer and why it's, uh, I think, what m- was so special about MAPS was it's so polar opposite of most of the message that's given out there right now <clears throat> that that's why so many people are seeing such a huge difference from it because, you know, everything you see right now on Instagram is these these splits and these seven days a week and no days off and that like... It's just – it's the complete opposite approach, and it's a much smarter approach towards your results. And I think that most people were attempting that other way. So mm-hmm. when they go back and, like, do this in a much more methodical way, they see huge results. So and then d- if you actually a- apply the trigger sessions – So remember the – which Batman was it with um, the dude who had the crazy-looking mask and he was hella jacked? Bane. Bane. Uh, yeah. Who's the actor that plays him? Um – you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he built Tom Hardy. Uh, there you go. He did, he built hella muscle uh, for that role. Yeah. Uh, so I just saw this the other day. Someone sent it to me, and they're like, "Oh shit, he did trigger sessions." Now I don't think he. I don't know. I don't think he followed maps or whatever. I think he just did it himself. But he talked about his uh, his workout routine. Who's his trainer? Did it, did it highlight that? I don't remember. I don't. Hmm. Or at least it didn't list it. Maybe he said that the way he worked out was instead of doing these crazy you know two hour workouts as he would do these mini workouts all day long mm. and that he got way better results doing it and he built lots of muscle and someone sent that to me and I thought Boom. that was, I thought that was pretty fascinating yeah you know that he did that so pretty cool that's cool I think yeah, in a he per- got I, for that movie I mean I I did one one show I don't know why I had the time to do this but I did have one of my shows where and I don't know what we were doing currently at that time but I had it might have been one of the early ones where I just I made that like the number one priority. Like I'm training, I'm dieting, I'm, I'm going to go win this show. Like it's everything else in my life was priority two, three, four. Like I really was that focused on training. And so I was utilizing things like this where I'd be in the gym like three, four times in a day, but it wasn't like a crazy intense workout at all. It was like the idea was I was going Get a in pump there. Yeah, time. yeah. Just I would go address, I'd go in, go hit shoulders and maybe buys, and then I'd come back later on and go get triceps and maybe back, and then I'd come back again. You know, and then in between I was walking, then I'd go eat and then come back. Like, oh man, I mean, I never felt that so. sounds like fun. It, it, was, it actually does. I'm not being. I'm not well, being. no, it was. I it was actually f- freaking really awesome, and I never felt taxed. Right, I never felt. How like, did your body respond? Oh, it was incredible. I mean, it was definitely part of the the journey for me during all the shows and on, on the way to go going pro and stuff. I don't remember what show it was. Now, I don't think it was like this. Holy shit! It changed who I was. Well, you but, already knew how to work out, too, right? Yeah, it's not like it was going to be this like it was like game changing for me or what like that. But it was it was really nice. It was a refreshing way to train if I had that kind of time, right? Like if I was 
uh, full time competitor and made enough income that I, all I had to do was worry about. You lived in Kuwait, right? You know, <laughs> right. Paid for everything. Yes. Right. Well, so that excellent point right there. Oh, so it is. That's, my, a great that's point. A, it's actually that's an actually. So when when I talked to Ben Pakolsky, and this was a question actually that uh, that we'll address that was on our Q and A that we didn't put up here was. Uh, if we knew what was going on over there. And I, I did have a chance to talk to Ben about this and he's been there and gone through the whole thing. And he's like, no, it's not because we thought like, oh, they must be like myostatin. Yeah, some inhibitor. crazy drug. We yeah, right. Heard. Or the newest, purest, you know, steroid. And he's like, no. And, and of course they have. They have good steroids. Yeah, there. they have that. But that's high, no high but, premium. But stuff, plenty yeah. of guys order that stuff and get it over where we're at. So that's not the big difference. He says it's just the environment. It's like the most ultimate recovery rehab fuel gym sleep is all centralized in like this one location so that's you know, all you do you go there and that's all you yeah do. train eat sleep yeah. train eat sleep train eat sleep and that's probably happening multiple times probably three times a day for a lot of those guys It'd be really interesting to actually ask one of them at like if that if that's true like i'd be i would speculate now knowing from Ben's perspective, what we speculated on, yeah, and now seeing sense. seeing the, seeing the, such a huge change in these guys, and it's like, dude, I bet, I bet they did a crazy hard training session in the day, and then they had one or two other ones where they were constantly just touching muscles and stuff like that uh, all day all day long, and then fueling up and then sleeping and shit. So, yeah, I bet that's right in line. Awesome. I bet you. Bring it. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. First question is from Chris Santi. I'm never happy with any jobs I have and change jobs within a year. I'm 24 years old. How did you guys figure out what you wanted to do? Oh, wow. I'm going to address the very first part of that. <laughs> yeah, go. Why don't wow. you go? Yeah. Um, mm. I can hear it in your voice. Right. Mm. Uh, I'm. Yeah, I know. I hope we don't. I don't lose a fan here. I know. So uh, I'm never happy with the jobs I have. Well, there, there's your problem right there. Yeah, let's... It's not... It's never the jobs, it's you. You know, you're the common denominator in all this. They're all different jobs, but you tend to continue to be unhappy. And you can't, and I think when people are searching for external things to create happiness within, uh, they forever fall short because that's not how it works. It starts within. It's very simple or similar to Sal giving his, uh, you know, weight loss analogy for people that. You know, they want to lose this weight because they don't love themselves. Or because, it'll make them happy. They right. Think. They think if once they lose their 50 or 100 pounds, they're going to be happy. Then guess what happens? They lose their 50, 100 pounds and they're still just as unhappy as what they were when they first started and realize that it wasn't the, the 50 pounds. It's it's something that starts within. Like, so you make that choice. And, you know, I, I also think this was some of the benefits uh, for me for being somebody who kind of had kind of a tough upbringing and childhood and you know, uh, I, I like I learned to have to look at things in a more positive light because there was so much negativity and bad stuff that was around me. So you actually learn because you have to survive in that that setting that, you know, everything isn't happy, isn't grand, isn't easy. In fact, most of everything that was around me was extremely challenging and hard. And so I found to 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 love everything I did. And the way I did that was and a good book for this is uh, Fred Factor. It's a short, easy read, um, and it's it's really about uh, you wanting to be the best version of yourself, no matter what it is that you're doing. Um, so that's just the first half of this sentence. Like you're never happy with the job, so that it's not the job; it's you. So you have to you have to look into that first. Um, and if that stings me saying that, that should just let you know how much that's probably an issue. So <clears throat> I'll uh, I'll say this: um, two things. So to kind of comment on what you said, Adam. Um, you're never going to be happy seeking happiness, right? Okay? Cause seeking is literally the antithesis antithesis of happiness. So the seeking itself is, is part of the problem. So that's number one. But number two, you're 24 years old, make your own job, like make your own career. This is the best time, uh, in history for you to be able to do that. And what I mean by that is the opportunities are so incredible right now for you to create your own employment 
Um, you know, I'm one of those people that I don't, I'll, I don't think I will ever be as content working for someone else as I ever will be, uh, work like I am working for myself. And I invented my own, my own career, my own job. Now, when I first started as a trainer, I absolutely loved it. I loved the gym and I, I was one of those lucky people that kind of knew early on, you know, what I wanted to do. But, um, I'm also one of those people that when it, when things change and shift, I make the change, um, and the, the shift that I make is is one to to suit me a little better. Like I said, I worked for corporate gyms and I worked for myself. So, twenty four years old, create your own job. Uh, whatever you are, whatever you do like, you can create a a, a business out of it. Mm. Especially with social media, you don't need millions of followers to do this. You just need thousands. Yeah. Uh, you need to provide good content, good value. Taylor, the guy that runs our our social media and our YouTube. He had a six-figure big, you know, business when he was in his. I think he was nineteen, twenty, you know, and he was brokering tennis shoe sales um, and selling apparel to people who were in that world. I mean, he completely created his own job and he loved it. Um, and then when he stopped liking it, he stopped doing mm. it. Manifest destiny. I mean, if you're unhappy, like, and, and this is something that you know. Um, I'm always I'm always hypercritical of my state of mind uh, while I'm doing things like and I'm not much for like woo woo or like, um, you know, energy or whatever you're putting out or like the secret or anything like that. But uh, at the same time, like there's there's something to your attitude going into work or, or certain activities or different things that you feel are like super hard and challenging for you. If you go in and you start really working just on your attitude, that's when things start to kind of open up and make sense. Like, so somebody may pick up on this, this positivity, this energy that may present, you know, another opportunity that actually might be the job you've always wanted, you know, but like, if you're not projecting yourself in a way that's attractive to whatever that job may be that you really want, um, you know, that's going to be a really hard thing to overcome. Like, it's just going to keep repeating itself because, you know, the attitude is everything, man. It's, it, it's what you have to like start uh, well, with. You know, I, I looked at her, <clears throat> her profile just now and, you know, at literally at this age, so, or I had a girlfriend that was 24 and I, I was 28 at the time. And I remember th- during that we were, we were together for a little over a year and I remember in that year and a half, almost two years time that she had like three or four jobs. And I remember like her like writing up her resume for this new job that they, they were offering her more money than the current one she was at. And I remember asking her like, you know, why are you, why are you leaving this job? And she's like, what do you mean? This, they're offering me at least a dollar fifty to $2 more an hour for this job. And I'm like, well, yeah, but what about, see, I said, what about the people that are, look at this resume? Like the way I would look at this resume. Cause if you drop this resume in front of me, mm-hmm. I wouldn't hire you. And she's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, you've got what like the time span. You got like six to eight jobs that you different jobs. You you think you're building a resume by having this. None of them you've stayed for longer than a year. So what that says to me is as an employer, like I go, how do, what makes me think she's going to be loyal to me and stay working for me for longer than a year? Uh, there's no way I'm going to hire this person. You know, I don't care if she's got this experience, this experience, that experience. It sh- shows to me that she can't stay loyal to anybody. And then when things get tough, she probably bounces. And so, you know, if you're finding this where you're bouncing from job to job, you know, this is a great time to have self-reflection and go like, okay, what is it in my day to day that I'm hating, why I'm hating, or I don't like this job so much that I need to leave. And then addressing that and working on it. Um, You know, there was, there was no job I ever did that was perfect and easy and just what I love to do. But, you know, I, I found, I found what I liked about all of them. They're stepping stones. Right? right. And then, and then when you, when you come across the challenges, cause that's, that's inevitable, that's going to happen. It happens to all of us and you get angry or you get frustrated or you want to be there instead of doing what most people do in those situations, blaming the boss, blaming the employee you're working with, blaming the customers. How about, Stopping right there, reflecting on why does this make me feel that way? Why do I not like this job? Why do I hate this person? Why do I hate working for them? And look deep inside yourself and ask yourself what what makes you feel that way, and then try and re- reflect and grow on that. Yeah, and, and and just consider the, there's so many opportunities that present themselves in situations that you would never expect. You know, I made years ago. I had a member that approached me 
um, who had this uh, idea, this business idea, and it was uh, it was multi level marketing, and I knew it was. But I said to myself, um, he's a member, you know, like, I want to show up. I already told him I would, but I knew it was going to be bullshit. We sat down and we talked about that and whatever. It wasn't, you know, it was it was multi level marketing. It wasn't something that I was interested in. But I showed up and I had great conversation with this person. I made a good contact. Years later, this person ended up becoming uh, very valuable to me in my business as somebody who would refer me clients and customers. Um, you don't know what kind of opportunities you're going to be presented mm-hmm. working for these different jobs and these different bosses with these different employees. So in these jobs, even if you are thinking to yourself, I want to leave, I need to find another job, always be awesome. Like yeah. never represent yourself in a way that is less than your best because <clears throat> showing your best and being your best and working hard opens up so many doors and opportunities more than we can we can calculate right now more than we can figure right now because like i said opportunities present themselves in very strange ways i've made many business deals and many i've had many awesome things happen out of situations that i would have never expected out of meetings that i didn't want to go to because every, i thought it was a waste of time every right? job i've had that <laughs> Every job, every business, everything I've tried to be involved in has led to something else mm-hmm. or p- the potential to something else because of that. You're, you couldn't be more right with that statement that if in this is Fred Factor gets into that. So that's why this is that's such a great book to read is you when you when you put your heart and soul into everything that you do and you take pride in it like that. You know, you never know. Like, and I have no idea what this person does, but let's just say, you know, 24 years old, you've got like maybe like a Starbucks job, right? I'm sure a lot of 24 year olds work at Starbucks. So we'll just use that as an example. And, you know, you just, you do your job just like the other, everybody else does. You say the thing they tell you to say when people come up, you take the order in, you do what you're supposed to do just to get by and stuff like that. And you don't really make a mark. But then let's pretend you're that 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 kid or that person that works there that does go above and beyond all the time. And you're the person that these customers, they come in, they just they love to see your face because you always say something different or make them smile or make them laugh. And you become this memorable person. And then guess what? One day, you know, this multimillionaire walks in who owns six different companies and just happens to be looking for a position for somebody like maybe his right hand girl assistant or whatever and you just he there's something about you your presence that he's drawn to and says hey you know what did you always want to work here would you be open to something else and he drops you his card and he walks away and now you're set up with some you never know you, you know never what I'm know there's so you many have, i've i've been i don't know how many times it's happened to me, me though, like that where where somebody has seen mm-hmm. uh i mean i could go back and and those that have been i've been to propositioned me. for for other jobs and careers so many times because just the way i you know interact with people when they would come to my gym mm-hmm. members used to i used to get i i can't tell you i mean it was. It would be pretty regularly where a member would come up to me and be like, "Hey, would you like to work for right. me here? Would you like to?" And that's how I found half my staff, by the way, within careers, same way that have yeah. nothing to do with what you do. That's it, yeah. right? Like, I mean, most all those prop- propositions I've had have been have been a, a field that I know nothing about. But it's not. That's it's the character they see. Really good leaders. Can see, can find, and see character dude, like this, dude. Half look, my half my staff, I would, I, I, I got yeah, that way. I it look, sticks out like a sore thumb. I look for this all the time. I mean, look at the people that are working with us now, right? As we start to bring people on board with Mind Pump, these are people that I've probably known for a really long time, or connected through me through somebody else. And the reason why we've brought them into our circle it has nothing to do with oh, maybe they're the best at doing this one skill set that we need. It's their character. Right, it's 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 their attitude, it's their vision, it's who they who they are as a person. I believe once they understand what we're trying to accomplish, they'll figure out a way to apply that and help. And I think most really good leaders see this in people, and so you most certainly got to find a way to change your attitude towards the jobs. Eventually, the career or the thing you do for the rest of your life will come. And let's be honest, most of us feel like we're probably just now finding that, and we're approaching our forties. Yep. So mm-hmm. don't trip out; you're only twenty four. Yeah, you'll get there. Next up is Sack.E, who plays collegiate rugby and wants tips on how to become faster and more explosive. Ooh, Britain. sounds like a great candidate for maps performance. Yeah, you know, you know why I like this question or why I picked it? Because I want to address getting faster and being more explosive for a sport mm-hmm. in the sense that 
Uh, Those the are time, skills. Yeah, and the times you train to become faster and more explosive are not when you're in the peak of your season. Mm-hmm. So I want to be clear with that. When you're training to improve upon your power, mm-hmm. your strength, and your speed, the time to do that is before the season. That's, that's when why you can, we have an off season. That's why you have an off season. It's not because you're taking a break and relaxing necessarily. It's because yeah. you're trying to improve upon the foundations of your performance, which are strength, speed, uh, you know, agility, power, mm-hmm. uh, endurance, or stamina. You want to build those as much as you can uh, in the in the preseason. Then in the season, your job with your training really is just to kind of maintain and prevent injury. It's it's not a good idea to train hard to improve while you're in the peak of your season because it's kind of a recipe for injury. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, it's just too much. It's too much it's all the time. It's counterproductive. It yeah. is. So, like for example, the way we programmed Maps Performance, which uh, is definitely ideal for athletes. The way we set up the phases is so that you have four phases leading up to a season. Yeah. yeah. And at, and then right when the season starts, you're at peak performance. You've already done the strength, you've already done the you know, the training for for you It was know. very it was very thought out as far as the progression of like which adaptation would fit best, you know, in conjunction and going like in, in specific order. And that is definitely why we put endurance at the very end of it, because you know, the body can really respond and adapt fairly quickly uh, to that adaptation. And and so we wanted to make sure that that fit in nicely, like right going into like, say you're going into your double days, you're going into, mm-hmm. you know, you practice with the team and you want to be at your ultimate conditioning. Um, but yeah, like Sal said, working on um, that raw strength, that, that ability to, um, you know, on command, um, you know, drive weight off the ground or drive your, your legs hard into the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, these are, these are things that you definitely need, um, to build upon, but you know, it, it's going to work in this, in this sort of ladder fashion where we're going to go into that. And then we're going to go into the next phase where, you know, we're, we're working a little bit more on our proprioception. We're working on our movement patterns and, mm-hmm. and making sure that, you know, the body and, and the joints can respond appropriately when you make those hard cuts. This, these, uh, the other thing too, I see a lot when athletes talk about getting faster and more explosive is that they focus on, uh, complex movements and techniques and forget mm-hmm. that the foundation for all these pursuits, all of these physical pursuits is strength is strength. So what I mean by that is if you build just good, solid strength while maintaining your skills training, cause you don't want to lose your skills or your, your, you know, your connection to your body or the, or the field or all that stuff. If you build just regular strength, you're going to get a lot faster mm-hmm. and you're going to get a lot more, more explosive. So the first thing I ever, I ever recommend to an athlete who's asking me this question is I say, just get stronger in your core oh, foundational let's, movement. Let's, let's break, let's literally break down and share the, the, the each phase and how many weeks and how we program green. So people understand that. I mean, it's, we start, we start off with raw strength in, in maps performance and it's, we're there for three weeks. That's your maximal kind of grinding strength, right? So yeah. you, you you train that first. So for three weeks, you're you're heavily focused on on strength, which is your low rep range, heavy weight. In the tempo with that, we're a little more in the eccentric part with the explosive come up off the ground. So it is that like maximal uh, try like force output. Well, then we move from. over to reactive strength, which yeah. is fa- phase two. And phase two, we're there for for three weeks also, and then from reactive strength. We move over to explosive strength. Yeah, speed power. And that's three three weeks also. And then we fin- finish up with strength durability or what we would call also endurance. So that's mm-hmm. what we were saying before you head into it. Mm-hmm. So that's what the the entire layout looks like. So it's a total, what, three, six, nine, 11 weeks? Is that mm-hmm. what it is, mm-hmm. right? 11 total weeks leading up to your season. And literally, if you followed that kind of formula of every three fa- three weeks, you're phasing into a new adaptation towards... Uh, performing better and then leading up to that's your- the order that's exactly the order you want to become faster and more explosive that's the order you should train your 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 slow grinding you know base strength and your reactive strength which is more about proprioceptive ability because now we want to make it so that you have it uh, be more a little more functional and then to your power type training the durability training 
uh, is more towards just giving you stamina. But really, the first three phases, like what Adam was talking about, that's the order that you want to train, and you should spend at least two to four weeks in each phase leading up to the explosive training phase, which is also, if you're if you're training for explosive power and you're doing things like plyos, it's very specific. Yeah. The goal is not fatigue. The goal is not to burn yourself out. The goal is literally to be able to explode yeah. as hard as possible. And so that's the way you want to treat your plyo training. Get as well. like close to instantaneous response as possible. And, and what's really cool about it is, you know, as you go through like raw strength, you really can see how now uh, just having more strength and stability by, you know, doing these types of lifts at that pace will go into now, okay, I'm taking my time, but now I'm moving in more multiplanar fashion, which is very important because, you know, in a game setting, you're, you're you're not going to be in this nice, like comfortable sagittal plane. You're going to be all over the place Mm -hmm. and your joints have to have that strength and respond appropriately further out, which mobility was the other part to that, that really enforces um, the fact that, you know, you are capable of going a little bit further with your joints. You just have to make sure you, you are secure in that and you have the ability to summon strength to overcome the forces. Well, on that note, which is important, I should, didn't say as I was laying out the layout and the format of maps performance is also on your off days you know of training for these adaptations you're focused on what are called mobility days right so there's specific movements in there to improve upon your mobility while you're still training for your sport or whatever it is that we're leading up to so um, that's what it looks like on your other day so instead of trigger sessions or focus sessions like we do in the other programs performance is heavily focused on the mobility and, for the reasons that Justin's talking about. And that begs this question, does working on mobility make me faster and more explosive? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Because many times... It's very foundational. Yeah. Many times the limiting factor with an athlete uh, in terms of their speed and explosiveness is a lack of mobility or a lack of stability because the body comes with its own rev limiter, if you will. Like when you're lifting a weight, uh, a maximal weight, or when you're exploding or taking off as quickly as you can, your body has these natural checks and balances that prevent you from exerting maximal force because mm-hmm. it's protecting you from injury. Yeah. Now, the more training you go through, the more experience you have, the more you're able to reach a limit of uh, or reach your limit of maximal exertion, which is part of the reason why you get so much stronger and better just by practicing the skill. But uh, mobility helps with that because mobility has – it's every, it's everything, right? It's stability. It's being able to move a joint through a large range of motion but have control in that entire range of motion. It's moving in all these different planes and having control. So if now you're super stable and mobile in all these different ranges of motion. When you go to make a movement or explode or cut to the left or the, to the right or jump – that limiter that you have on your body... Yeah, it opens up a bit. It, it opens up because mm-hmm. you're stable and your body senses this. So now it's boom. You yeah. feel like you can move uh, with more speed. And, and, and that... Well, yeah, your body doesn't want to injure itself, right? right? So you have to teach it that it's going to be okay. And like the more you teach it that it's going to be okay with these types of explosive movements... You know, the better your performance gets, the more output you 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 get with you know with that movement. So it, it definitely is a repetition thing that you have to apply. That's right. So mobility, big big important factor. Next question is from MGRDO thirty one. How do you guys pick the books you read? Mm. Yeah, Adam. Uh, I have a couple different ways that I do that. that. That's a good. That's a question I would like. To know from you, yeah. Um, there's a couple. Well, there's it depends when recommendations. Right? So right? some, yeah, no. There's a there's a so like I said, there's several different ways. One of the ways uh, I used to read was I'd go, um, I'd read two books that I I so about something that I wanted to learn, and then I'd read one that was like purely for entertainment for me. So I used to read a lot of uh, biographies and stuff. So I, I typically would read two books that was on topics or subjects that I wanted to learn more about, and then I would read one that was purely for, you know, entertainment reasons or about some about somebody that I wanted to learn about. So that was kind of the formula I, I followed for quite some time. This past year, um, I set a goal at the beginning of the year just to make sure that I, I knocked out one book a month, which I don't think is too much a stretch. And I know some people that read way fucking Ben, what does Ben read five a week or something? Yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. It makes me feel like a chump when he yeah. does that. Uh, but you know, so some people read a lot 
faster than I do, so you could knock out more. But I know that what I tend to do is I used to, in the past, I'd go in these these spurts where it's like if I'm traveling and vacation, I'm flying a lot, I'm reading a lot, then I'm busy, and then all of a sudden I stop reading, and I, then I would go on these you know, peaks and valleys. And one of the things that I wanted to establish this year was just consistency with reading because I noticed that it creates better content content for me on, on posts and stuff I put out, better content for what we talk about on the show. And so this year was more about consistency with me with reading. And so that's why I set out the goal that I want to knock out a book a month. And right now, the way I, I typically choose books, it, it is, it's, it's a, along the lines of things that um, I'm interested in. I don't read a lot of uh, fitness stuff, which I think a lot of people think that we would. Um, like right now I'm reading, uh, I'm reading a couple books right now. I'm reading subliminal right now. I'm reading dot com secrets right now. And I'm reading blue water. So typically I'm typically reading two or three books. One book I'm reading by myself. One book, uh, I'm normally reading with Katrina or listening to on audible. And then I normally have a book that I'm listening to, to and from work. So, you know, dot com secrets is internet marketing. Uh, subliminal is about unconscious and conscious neuroscience. And then, um, uh, blue ocean strategy is is business, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, those I, I tend to those those are kind of the topics that I, I, I like to learn about. Um, a lot I've actually read a lot of books this year that were referred to me. I, one of my favorite things about sharing what I'm reading is I get a audience of people that will inbox me and be like, "Oh, if you like that, you should read this, Adam." And so, I've read uh, quite a few books this year that were purely recommendations from other people based off of what they've seen that I'm reading. And I know people too that uh, know that I love to challenge one way. So I'll read a books with opposing, like, so I already have the book lined up for after Blue Ocean Strategy and it's called Red something. I forgot what it's called, mm. but it's basically the, so op- the opposite. Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like the opposite theory, right? It's the opposite theory cool. of, yeah. of, so that way I can get two perspectives, right? This whole book is because anyone's silly to think that there's not going to be a bias in every book that you read. It's written of by, course. it's written by a human, yeah. right? And we all have bias. You know, we all have pol- political sides to us. We all have personal views, religious views, whatever. And so anything uh, is going to have some sort of bias. And because of that, I love, and I really, this is a page out of Paul check. I, I mean, I, I aspire to be like this one day where my library looks like his, where if somebody came in, you would just trip out on how different his readings well, the counter, are. Yeah, the, the counter, yes, the books whole spectrum. Counter it's, yes, it's there. On, yeah. yeah, I mean, you just will have like the vegan miracle, and then like paleo solution, Ooh, and you yeah. know, all like right, right next to each other, yeah, and all different religions and practices and yeah. ideologies that are conflicting of each. I just love that, and I think that I think everybody should kind of take just a page out of re- well rounded, especially yeah, when we've yeah. talked about this on the show before. I think real quick you can get a lot of confirmation bias because you, if you tend to oh read this book, and then what do they do? If you read this book, you should read this book too. Oh, if you read that book, you should read this book too. And guess what? They're all saying the same goddamn message, you know what I'm saying? In different words. It's like, you know, instead of that, actually, why don't you read the book that is completely counter- That refutes it. Yeah, Yeah. right. That refutes that and and then actually, and then gather your Mm. knowledge like that. So- You know, I, I like to read like that. I like to challenge my, my own way of thinking and, uh, and philosophies and, uh, but I, those are kind of the subjects I like. I like, uh, psychology too. So I, I, I know, I picked up a book the other day that was not, I don't remember the title mm. of it, but mm. I just went to the bookstore the other day and I'll just grab a bunch of topics I like. Yeah, I, I really, really, really love uh, books. However, um, I don't read a lot of them, believe it or not. I don't read a lot of actual books. The way I read is I read uh, articles, I read studies, I read magazines, I read uh, you know, I belong to forum groups uh, that, uh, that you know, some of them are economic, some of them are science, some of them are nutrition, some of them are political, you know, whatever, you know, some of them are entrepreneur. And then people on there will post interesting articles mm-hmm. or studies or, you know, debates or discussions. And that's where I consume 99% of the information uh, that I consume. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will say this, though. I go through spurts of where I'll pick up a book and read a book. And when I do that, I tend to read a whole bunch in a real short period of time. Like I'll have like a one month period where I really want to read books. And I haven't had one in a couple years, but when this happens, I'll read, you know, in a month I can read as many as 10 books all at once. So it hasn't happened, uh, like I said, for a few years. 
we'll see what happens. The other thing that happens to me is I'll read a book and once I feel like I got the idea, I stop reading the book. Mm-hmm. I do you know how many books I've read halfway through? Oh, I've, or, done I've done that a lot. Yeah, I, 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 I do that. I do that a lot. We once get, I you know, feel like the book, I have is, a fifty page rule. Really? Mm-hmm. I got to read the first fifty pages. Yeah, I, I have a fifty page rule. I give every book at least fifty pages. Shelf it. Well, I mean, if it's it, I, no, not always. It's if I I'll give every book, no matter how slow of a start it is, at least fifty pages. And if I if I feel like I already know where mm-hmm. it's going, like yeah. okay, I'll give you an example. Although I did finish it because Kishore and I were going together, the uh, the Alchemist. Like it, I I read that book so late. Like everyone has been telling me to read that book for like ten years or whatever, and I was just like, I never got to yeah, it. Yeah, Courtney just read that. I finally read it, and people just love that book. And I think so many people. T- I was like, oh well, I've heard this message told a million different ways in a million other books that I've read already. So even though I listened to the whole thing because Katrina was enjoying it, I was like. I was telling her like, oh, okay, this is what's going to happen. He's going to do this and this is this and this is the moral of the story and this is why. Mm-hmm. And I was like, so I get books like that too where I'll read a book and because I feel like I can, I already get the message it's trying to, to give and I, it's like, why should I, well, I don't want to read the rest of yeah, it. I'd rather, a, I'd rather read something that's going to be like, oh shit. Well, once I feel mm-hmm. like I get the message and then I feel like they start repeating themselves or trying to make different cases for it, then I'm, the last book that I read that was really a full book that was really compelling that was different in the, uh, new what, earth for you i'm sorry new earth no no oh uh, well a new earth was really good that was definitely fantastic oh, i've heard you talk about that more than yeah no no that was a fantastic book um then before that the one i was just thinking right now was uh many lives many masters which uh is a very interesting book um, my sister loved that one did she uh-huh. very interesting book it, it got me to think of things a little differently Th- around this time this is when i was uh, you know, because my family's Catholic, so I was raised Catholic. Then I became atheist, pretty hardcore. This book got me to kind of where I'm at now, where I'm more of an agnostic. You know, I kind of I don't believe there's nothing, but I also don't believe in one particular thing. And uh, very, very interesting book, good read, fascinating. Uh, but other than that, man, it's just fucking. I just read articles. Uh, it's funny too long. because <laughs> people think I read books all the time. But well, you know why? Because and this just happened to us this morning. You were talking about a study, and I'm reading it in a book that I'm reading right now. Oh, right. And you've already read the study in probably just by itself, PubMed or as an, in an article, yeah. because that's how you read. And you were familiar with what I was trying to explain, that the book gave a whole chapter around me understanding it and then explaining and then talking about the study where you're somebody who goes directly to the source a lot. Like much much of the books that are that we read, at least all of us, are into are based off a lot of these science, especially when we're talking about neuroscience, consciousness, mm-hmm. shit like that, which you're very much so into. You've already read all the studies for it. You get you get the premise. Like so, I'm gonna spend my I'm gonna spend the next couple of weeks reading this book that you grasp already because you've already read the study. So everybody get I think everybody gets information. Mm-hmm. In, in That's di- a good in point. different ways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I I, I tended you know cereal like, boxes for you, right? Cereal uh, and usually do- <laughs> yeah, like Doctor Seuss and, and Marvel comics. Hey, bro, dude. <laughs> Do not knock on fucking Dr. Seuss because I, I still, still read stand. it to my kids. He's all one, time. He, in my opinion, he's the greatest philosopher no, of all time. I, lo- I love it. I, I, Red I, fish, blue I'm fish. not knocking that. I will. I will I, fight I, that all day long. I think <laughs> he's the greatest philosopher yeah. all time. Yeah. No. I like a lot of my clients tend to recommend books, and so um, that's usually where I, I tend to get my ideas from for the most part because they're all just like killing it in business and life and. Um, I'm always very receptive to, you know, any kind of advice like this is going to be a great read for you right now because where you are in life, like for instance, uh, reinventing yourself is one that I've been reading quite a bit. And it's just like, and it's not that that I've been going through like a hard year or anything, but it's been challenging at times for like, you know, new ventures and different things and, um, you know, how things are, 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 you know, there and available, how things are, aren't there and available and like what other really massively successful like entrepreneurs have done in those situations. And, uh, they highlight a lot of different stories in there from, um, you know, it's just, it's encouraging, you know, it, it's like, you know, you could try some idea over here and fucking fall flat on your face, but like they've done it a million times, you know, like a, a lot of the most successful people have done this repeatedly and uh, it's just stuff like that. Like it comes up, you know, for me, it's, it's situational. Like uh, if it's something like I'm trying to learn something very specific or I'm like getting really into tech, like I'll read a lot of tech journals. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll read like a tech book that's very just like manual driven. 
like, here's how this works. And I like try to learn like, okay, well, what's the science behind like making an app and like, what are they trying to configure and what's, what's in this like, um, you know, wireframe and why do they structure it this way? And so that's the kind of stuff I'm like, I'm like, okay, if I'm into this, I'm really into this. Or, you know, if, if we're going in this direction, I want to know, you know, the behind the scenes kind of stuff that like, like they're engineering, you know, are behind you, things. Do you guys read a lot of fiction ever? Do you ever read fiction? I used to. I haven't in a long time. It used to be science fiction a lot. Have you? So you've never. Have you? There's no fiction book that you can remember that you read. Not since fucking high school. Really? Mm. Not since I won't. I won't either. You won't get me to. Really? Because you know. Because for many years I didn't even like to read. Being completely transparent. mm -hmm. Just uh, I was that person once school ended and I was working and I was making money. You know, me, I was like the, the small brain me, right? 20 years old or whatever. It's just like, I'm done. I don't need to read anymore. I've got my job. I love what I'm doing. Sure, I'm reading certifications and getting more knowledge sure. in my field, but outside of that, not at all. And then that I made that transition at it, 25. It's it interesting because like, uh, I, I, same thing here, same here. I don't, I'm not pulled to fiction. However, I have definitely read fiction and fiction provides a different quality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's reading for leisure, but it's really, uh, it's, it's expansive. It's it is. Like, it's it, like it really helps you to stretch a bit with your yeah, with your thought process. I've I've recalled reading fiction and it improving my creativity and my thought process indirectly mm-hmm. almost. Yeah. Because you get lost in the book, you know, while you're kind of in there and reading and reading these stories, and so I haven't done it and I don't do it very often. I think the last fiction. Trying to think what I read. Uh, da Vinci Code. That's mm. fiction. Oh, that's cool. That was yeah, that was like a book. The, that was I fiction like that, that I read. Series. Yeah, dude. I, I you can't get me to do it, dude. I just yeah. I, a couple times I've like dabbled in it, tried, and I'm like, no, nah, it's not for me. It's just yeah. not. I I feel like I, I'm gonna read. I just ordered 1984. You did? Nin- yes. yes. Now that's uh, that's fiction. Yep. But that's got. I know There's I'm lots not, of parallels. I know to a today. lot about it. Yeah. yeah. Well, isn't Ta- Taylor's reading Player One? Isn't he? Mm, that I looks think so. that that, looks that intrigued cool. me a little yeah. bit because that's kind of see I, I, sci-fi. I could see yeah. myself like certain sci-fi because that would try pods. Wouldn't that follow under that, that category? Series. Would it go under there because I feel like it's fiction, but then it could be a reality. You know, if we keep heading this direction, so that sci. And I get where you're going with the cre- creativity thing. Um, it's but, just it's hard. It's harder to make time for that right because yeah. if you're reading like oh this is about business or oh this is about you know this thing i'm gonna learn yeah. versus i'm gonna spend well in two, an hour just you know relaxing i mean for the most part for any available time i have now is like uh, my commute's very long so i tend to stick more with podcasts or like if i if i get into audiobooks which i've been meaning to really dive deeper into that but I've been so compelled by people's conversations. Like I really get into well, it. Well, that's a new. I mean, if you so talk it's to a ma- new form oh, for oh, me, it is. If you talk to a lot of millennials, this is how they learn. This is exactly how they learn, and mm. that's Podcast. pod- podcasting has become a yeah. huge platform for education. Which is again part of you know our secret sauce is that. We try and entertain and inform at the same time, right? It's not just purely information, so you get bored to fucking death listening to somebody. Yeah. But then also you get little nuggets of good information. I, you know, stuff. I want to leave this this question with some advice for people who are listening. You know, young trainers or whatever, or people. Doesn't even training. matter. If it's a yeah, trainer. it doesn't even matter. Um, follow your when it comes to reading. Follow your passion. Feed your passion because that's going to lead you to learn uh, lots of amazing information. So. Whatever's feeding your brain, feed you know, seek it out. And it doesn't matter if it's articles, it doesn't matter if it's, it's great advice. You know, magazines <clears throat> or if it's books or podcasts, like feed that passion. Feed the beast. And it'll grow and expand and you'll No, it's a, that's such a that's such great advice because I, that goes back to what I was just saying, how I don't want like I don't like to read or I don't like to read the fiction because it's just you're, I'm not, not feeding your passion. Yeah, you're it's like a, don't it. force something that you're not into. Like just because someone's telling you you should learn more about this, if you're not into it, don't yeah. you know it goes back to that great advice I got when I was younger, just stop looking at the things you're not good at, focus on what you're already good at, be great at it, become a master at the things that you love. And so the books that I read are in the similar world that I love to, to learn about, but then I try and challenge the philosophies behind each one of them, right? I think mm. that's a cool way to go. Next question is from Rosie Rell. What are the effects of muscle growth when cannabis is used right after a workout? Is it because, are they thinking because of the anti-inflammatory? Is that why? I, I think maybe, or I think a lot of people like to smoke weed after a hard workout. You know what I mean? It, it mm. kind of... You know, you're amped up, you're in the gym, maybe you had a pre-workout, maybe you had coffee. I do. You hammer yourself, then you blaze, 
then you know you smoke a little cannabis, then you you eat the munchies and you have your post workout meal. I mean, it sounds like mm-hmm. it sounds like a very familiar recipe that I know a lot of people um, in the muscle building world follow. Here's the thing about cannabis and muscle growth. Okay, the the jury is still out in terms of how cannabis affects muscle protein th- synthesis and, and the like. But we do have some clues. And some of this stuff I'm going to say you might not like to hear. Um, THC in particular, in uh, at least initially, has a negative effect on uh, testosterone production. In animals, it's pretty predictable that you're going to reduce testosterone by a little, like a 5 or 10%. In humans... The studies are murky. Uh, Regular users show no difference in testosterone. Short-term users show a drop. So perhaps what's happening is initially you get a little drop and then afterwards the body balances itself out. So there's that. Um, It affects uh, hormones like insulin. So here's some good news. Uh, Cannabinoids in cannabis have been shown to improve insulin sensitivity and it's mediated through uh, the liver. So this may be a good thing when you're trying to eat your carbs post-workout and you want to improve insulin sensitivity to get more of those carbohydrates to where you want them to go and also to reduce, uh, you know, potential fat gain from being insulin uh, insensitive or having insulin, uh, you know, issues with uh, your body responding to insulin. Um, Then there's the anti-inflammatory effects. Cannabis or cannabinoids have... And a a mild, very very mild, acute anti-inflammatory effect. In yeah, other but words, this is also negated when you smoke it, right? I mean, because you're gonna because you get you're gonna get pro-inflammatory if you and if you say if you smoke. Smoke it. is the worst way to administer but, cannabis, but it's what the way most yeah. people are, right? Yeah. So I think you have to address that, right? Yeah. So if you're using cannabis for anti-inflammatory properties, you're probably just it's a wash you're because you're wrong. Because you're smoking. As far as the inflammation is concerned, you still you're still better off even if you smoke it. Um, but for the anti-cancer effects, for sure. Oh yeah. Now no, you're at now you're at you're at totally, baseline. Oh, yeah, 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 for yeah, that for sure. But it, it, uh, in terms of inflammation, there's an acute anti-inflammatory response from cannabis or from cannabinoids, but it's super mild. In other words, if you never have cannabis and then you have it, you'll get a little bit of an anti-inflammatory effect. Now the real anti-inflammatory effects are long term. The the low uh, low exposure, low but frequent exposure cannabinoid, to cannabinoids has this kind of systemic anti-inflammatory uh, effect in the body, which in some cases may be a good thing. Um, do I think it's uh, it's going to be pro muscle building? No, I don't. I think it, we're lucky if it gives you no effects to muscle growth. You're probably not helping yourself uh, by having cannabis post workout. You know what I mean? I don't think it's there's there's definitely something going on hormonally from cannabis because um and i think i've shared this before in the podcast i know i definitely have talked to you about this Alice. So um if i if i increase my intake and i i'm already not somebody who i don't consider myself like a heavy cannabis user i literally like you know maybe consistently drink, take two puffs off of a joint at nighttime and increased cannabis intake for me would be anything more than that and so i've had times where i've increased that uh, to double or triple the amount in a day, and I actually uh, get a uh, my gynomastia will flare up. Oh, you'll get a little. So bit. Mm. You, for sure, something's going on with my testosterone or estrogen levels for that to get flared up. And I remember that it took me a while before I kind of pieced that together because I I would get these weird kind of flare ups. And I'm like, this is weird. I'm not doing anything different hormonally. I'm not changing my testosterone. I'm not taking anything else. What's going on? And then I kind of go like, you know, I am smoking more weed than I usually do. And I remember the first time I started doing research on it, I was like, oh, shit. There's some there, there's a lot of studies that they've showed that there shows that some correlation with that. Mm-hmm. And so it, it caused me to start to inspect it more with myself. And again, I know we're talking anecdotal here. It's myself. But I have definitely noticed a significant so if you difference. if you're a if you're a kid teenage kid or kid in your twenties and you have uh, gynecomastia which is uh, breast tissue development or a little or swelling uh, at the nipple region um, and you go to a uh, endocrinologist or endo endo endocrino- yeah, endocrinologist I always say it wrong Doug always corrects me if you go see a hormone doctor um, and they'll they'll ask you all kinds of questions and one of the questions they're going to ask you is are you a heavy user of cannabis? Because 
it has been linked uh, to that in some studies. And yeah. there's lots of anecdote. It's also um, it also affects uh, ovulation in women. It can uh, have adverse effects on sperm production. So for sure, something is happening hormonally. Right? It's, something is something it, is. Dude, it attaches to one of the most, if not the most, abundant G protein coupled receptor in the body. Cannabinoid receptors are everywhere, but they're really concentrated in a few areas: your brain, your liver, and your gut, and your testicles and your ovaries. Uh, so all your your reproductive uh, areas are have tons of uh, of cannabinoid receptors. So it's going to have some kind of effect on you. Is it going to, you know, I think the abuse of it probably will have a negative effect um, on a lot of different things, but I don't think cannabis is one of those things that you should use and, th and think it's going to help you, you know, build muscle. No, um, it's definitely not. I don't think there's any, I don't think you can make any case that it's going to help the cause. No, I, I think th I could see a fat loss, potential fat loss benefit, but mainly from the strategic use of particular cannabinoids because, again, the insulin sensitizing effects. In fact, there's, I think, in phase one or phase two trials. Uh, well, we it, called that a long time ago, yeah. right? We called that when we did our marijuana episode almost mm -hmm. 500 episodes ago or whatever when we talked about the, the future of supplements and that we you know making it they'll soon make it I'm CBD, sure they'll make CBD it, will be yeah they'll make yeah. A, they'll make a fat loss supplement because you can you can right. make that to me if you're just a, a normal person that uses cannabis it's not in your best interest to go out of your way to use it more to try and get benefits for no. fat loss or building muscle in in my recommendation being another person who also uses cannabis I try and use it as judiciously as possible. I try and come off of it for a week or two every now and then. Like it's not something I'm trying to promote extra in my life. You it's know? remember this: your your body produces uh, its own cannabinoids, which are molecules that are very similar to the ones that are found in marijuana. This is why your body even reacts to cannabinoids from marijuana plant is because you already have these receptors that are that you evolved to have that respond to your body's own production of cannabinoids, otherwise known as endocannabinoids. L if you supplement with phytocannabinoids, that, that is cannabinoids from plants externally, so now I'm eating or I'm smoking or I'm vaping tons of cannabinoids, it's perfectly within reason to think that there's going to be a feedback system in the body that's going to sense a higher uh, amount of cannabinoids and is going to lower its own natural production of cannabinoids and or reduce the density of its own uh, cannabinoid receptors. In other words, having lots of cannabis causes your body to adapt in ways that may not be favorable because now you become you know, you know more dependent because now if you go off the cannabinoids, now you've got this lowered amount of cannabinoids, but you've also got, you know, you've got lower amounts of that your body's producing and a lower concentration of receptors. Now you may be in a bad uh, situation uh, where you can cause like an endocannabinoid uh, deficiency syndrome or something like that in extreme cases, which has been observed in, in some people. So it's definitely one of those things you can abuse. I know it's cool right now because it's becoming legalized and we talk about it all the time and we joke around, but um, it, it's not something I think you should go out of way to use unless you have a medical reason for it. In which case, it could be a miracle drug for some people. Right. Uh, you know, I've seen. Uh, you know, I, I just think you got to be careful. Like, I mean, it was like it's like the keto craze right now too. We talked about all the great benefits behind it, and then what happens with that? Everybody likes to take everything to extreme. You're, you're seeing that with cannabis. Yes, we're we're learning more and more about all of its benefits and how it can be a game changer and life changer. It, it doesn't would not give you a reason to go and start to introduce it into your life. Uh, for any of those reasons, like unless you have, like you said, you have a medical condition that okay, let's see if this well, helps. Well, the, the 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 rewards totally outweigh the risk. Like if you have cancer, um, the, and you know that there's cannabinoid, that cannabinoids kill cancer in many studies, um, and you're you're trying to do everything you can to cure yourself. Uh, one of the things you might want to do or look into is high doses of edible cannabis. Uh, all throughout the day. Basically, you're going to be stoned really bad all day long, which if you didn't have cancer, wouldn't be really cool, right? Not right. a good idea. But in that context, it's it, it may be a, a total benefit. In fact, I have, um, and I'm not promoting cannabis for 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 cancer killing. Um, except before I get you know people come after me, but um, there's lots of anecdote. There's lots of study. I my dad has a friend who's 75, lung cancer. 
um, and did not. Uh, basically, they're like, you know, we're gonna try. We can try chemo, but it's not gonna. It doesn't look good for you. So he he opted to not do it. Was given three months to live. Went and uh, watched the documentary, uh, the Rick Simpson story. I think it was who's this Canadian man who was synthesizing uh, uh, this cannabis extracts and giving it to cancer patients and finding that a lot of them were being cured. So he went and watched this documentary because my dad recommended it to him because I told him about it. And the 75-year-old man went, got his cannabis card, bought highly concentrated cannabis oil, had never had marijuana in his life, and gradually got himself to the point where he was taking a tremendous amount of this oil every single day because you can build a tolerance. And, you know, that was uh, two years ago. No cancer. And wow. his, his oncologist was like tripping out. Uh, yeah. and, and and they were actually saying, you know, this is very interesting. So fascinating stuff. But yeah, other than that. Probably not the best for muscle growth. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> Check it out. Go to YouTube. Mind Pump TV, Justin just posted. Holy shit. Make sure you check that out. A crazy, crazy video. Uh, we post a new one every single day. Also, if you go to mindpumpmedia.com, you can register for 30 days of coaching. It will cost you nothing. It's free. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.